Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make this jacket for a stuffed animal. I really wanted to make a jacket like this for the winter season and it's still technically winter where I live but I know I'm a little late. Still I think I came up with a great design and patterns for this so let's get started! The materials you'll need are some pins, scissors, fabric, I'm using this thicker black fabric just to make it feel more like a jacket. And I'm also going to be using a small strip of fake fur, and this is definitely optional, and I'm going to be using one button, but I just haven't decided which one. I also got a recent request on how to make a hood pattern, so I'm going to show you that part really quick. I'm just going to use some paper, a pencil, and my measuring tape. And the first thing I'm going to do is loosely measure around my stuffed animal's face. So as you can see, I'm just loosely wrapping this around her face, and the ends are going to be where you want your hood to connect in the front. So they don't have to meet in the middle, they can just go into the sides. And for me, that was about 15 inches, so I'm going to add an extra half inch for seam allowance. And I had to tape on some extra paper to the normal 8.5 by 11 piece, just because this is going to be a very big pattern, but depending on how big your stuffed animal is, you might not need that much. And I know it's hard to see, but I'm just now lightly sketching out the shape it's going to be, just to give you a better idea of what we're going to be drawing here. And the next thing I'm going to do is fold my paper in half, just to find the halfway point, because this is going to be symmetrical, so we're just going to draw one side and then cut it out on both sides. And this first line we're going to make is going to be curving upward like this. And to get that measurement, I'm going to turn my stuffed animal to the side, and just measure from a little bit below their neck all the way to their forehead, and this is how much the hood is going to stick up. But after making it, it's not actually going to stick that far out, so you can add 1 to 2 inches extra. I think I went with 10 inches for this. And I'm just curving my tape measure in this shape, and then putting a dot where I want the measurement to be. And then I'm just going to sketch a line to connect it to that point. And none of these lines are final yet, these are just some guidance lines. I knew I was probably going to have to move it based on the other measurements I'd take. As it was right there, it was way too high, so I eventually had to move that later. But now the next measurement we need to take is around the neck. So I'm just wrapping the tape measure around, and you'll want the ends to be wherever you want the ends of the hood to come in. And for me, that's about 10 and a half inches, and with this you want to keep that measurement, you don't need to add any extra. And that measurement needs to be the sum of these two curves on the sides, so I'm going to divide that measurement by two to get five and a quarter inches. And now I'm going to start drawing that curve a little bit above where we made that first mark. And when I start curving my measuring tape around, you'll see that the end of the tape measure does not even come close to that first dot we made, so we know we need to change that initial measurement. And you'll notice I extended that line just a little bit, but I would not recommend doing that. Try to keep that steep curve as close to the original measurement as possible, and you can just adjust the other curve to meet that one. So that's what I'm doing here. And it's definitely okay to have to increase the measurement of this curve just a little bit since you want it to meet with that other curve. And after that, the drawing of your pattern is pretty much done. The last mark I'm going to make is about an inch above the middle because that's the part where the two sides will connect. But if your stuffed animal is smaller, you can reduce that measurement or even just get rid of it completely and the sides don't have to connect. So now I'm just going to fold it in half and cut it out like this. And if you want to make sure this will fit your stuffed animal, you can always just tape it together along this larger curve and then just try it on. I already have another pattern for this, so I'm not going to bother cutting it out, but now we can move on to the next step. Now I'm going to lay out my fabric on my cutting mat, and you can always just use scissors. And I have this fabric folded in half, so I get two of these pieces. So this is piece number two. And I want these pieces to be mirror images of each other, but with this fabric, the front and back look the same, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm doing the same thing for the sleeves since I need two of them. And I forgot to show the patterns earlier where I usually do, but the links to these will be in the description box below. And these were sized for a Build-A-Bear. This piece I'm cutting out now is only on one layer of fabric since I only need one. And now I'm just folding the fabric in half to do piece number five, the hood. And that way the two pieces will connect on the fold. Now the next thing I'm going to do is start hemming the bottoms of all of these main jacket pieces. So I'm just going to fold up the bottom edge once, and then pin this all in place. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the front pieces, and then I'm going to do a straight stitch along the bottom to sew it in place. After that, I'm going to set my back piece aside and just focus on these front pieces. And I know they look really weird with these little triangles sticking out, but that's because I want to add these folds that are usually connected to a collar that you see on a lot of jackets. And that explains this weird shape, but you can just cut them off if you don't want them. But I'm actually going to need to hem around these edges in different directions. 
But first I'm going to make a small cut a little bit before where that triangle starts. And now with the bad side facing up, I'm just going to fold over that curved edge like normal. And you might want to make a few small cuts around the curve too, just to make it easier to fold down. So that's what I'm doing now. And now it's easier to fold it over and pin it in place. And now since the triangle is actually going to be folded over, so the inside will be facing out, I'm going to flip the piece over to now hem the triangle. So I know this is really weird and I've never actually done anything like this, but it did end up looking good once it was finished. So right where that edge kind of straightens out, I'm going to make one more cut and now flip it back over and hem it the other way. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other piece and sew around this with a straight stitch. And I hemmed all the sections separately. Once they're done, I'm going to trim off any excess. And so once you lay them good side facing up, the triangle should have exposed raw edges, but that's perfectly normal because we're going to end up folding them back like this. But for now, I'm going to bring in that back piece and now lay them good side to good side with the front pieces. So I'm just lining up the tops of each piece and the middles should overlap like this. And then I'm going to pin them and sew them in place. Now I can set this aside and work on the sleeves. And I'm first going to hem the bottoms of each piece and I'm going to fold this over twice because I originally wanted to have these rolled up so the inside edges will be exposed. And that's why I made these sleeves extra long so they would be rolled up, but if you don't want to have to roll them up you can always just trim off a little from the bottom. And I actually ended up folding them a different way in the end so you don't have to double hem them if you don't want to. And after everything is pinned I'm just going to do a straight stitch along the bottom. After that, I'm going to grab the main piece and now we can sew the sleeves on. So I'm first going to open this up and now I'm going to match this up with the curves of the sleeves and I'm going to pin them together good side to good side, which can be kind of awkward, but I do this a lot on the channel. So if you've seen my other videos, you're probably used to it. You'll just want to pin together the curves the best that you can and any extra on the sides is completely normal. And after they're pinned, I'm going to sew them together with a straight stitch. After that, it looks beautiful and it's almost finished, but now we can move on to the hood. And I'm going to start by hemming this bottom edge, but I'm also going to be adding a little strip of faux fur on top of that. And this is actually going to be on the inside of my hood, but if you want it on the outside, you can just hem it first and then sew the fur onto the outside, or you could just leave it off completely. But I'm just going to sew this fur along the bottom edge, and it's okay that it's really only secured on one side, because then I'll be able to flip it out if I want to. Now I'm just going to sew along this bottom edge. And now I'm going to fold this in half, good side to good side. And remember, this is actually going to be the inside for me, so you have the bad side facing out right now. And now I'm going to pin together this curve, and then I'm going to sew it together, making sure to go all the way to the bottom where they connect. And after that, the hood is done, and now we can connect it to our jacket. So you want to make sure the good side of the jacket is facing up, and then you'll want to lay the edges of the hood together with the bad side facing up of the hood. And I made sure to start the hood a little bit past the triangle so it could still fold over. And now I'm just going to follow that, connecting the edges together. And my bottom edge of the hood was actually a little bit too big to fit on the neckline. So I had to add a few folds here and there. But I did end up making adjustments for the patterns I put in the description box. So if you use those, you probably won't have any problems with this. And as you can see, I'm having the two ends of the hood kind of tuck in and blend in with the jacket. And that means you should have a little bit of extra to cut off. Now I'm going to sew this together. After this, I'm going to set this aside and move on to some of the details. And for me, that is these pockets. And I think I forgot to show myself cutting these out, but there will be a pattern for this as well. And the style of pockets I was envisioning were these square pockets with a very wide fold at the top. So all I did was fold over the top a little bit and then fold that down a lot until it was pretty much a square shape. And this is actually going to be the good side that's going to be facing out. And so I'm going to pin this together and then just sew a straight line across there. Now these are ready to add on and I'm first going to make a few cuts on the corners just so I can fold up the edges more easily. And so now I'm going to start with one side and fold over the edge just a little bit. And then I'm going to lay this where I want it on the jacket and then pin it in place. And now I'm going to repeat that for the other sides and I found doing the opposite sides first is easiest. And then do the bottom last. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other pocket. And you'll obviously want to make sure you only sew down those three sides so it's still a pocket. And after that, it's finally time to close up this jacket. So I'm first going to turn this inside out. And now is the time I decide to cut off these extra pieces from the hood. And then I'm going to kind of fold the jacket in half so the sleeves and back and front line up. And then I'm just going to pin together the bottom of the sleeves and the sides of the jacket. 
and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And when sewing this, I'm going to start at the edge of the sleeve and then go all the way down to the bottom of the jacket. And after that, the jacket is pretty much done, but I still need to do a few more things to finish it up. The first thing is I'm going to fold back these flaps and I'm going to actually sew them folded like this just so they don't open up, but you can always just try ironing them down. And I'm just doing a few stitches right on the edge of the triangle and for me that's enough to secure them in place. And to knot that off in the back, I'm just going to insert my needle into one of the stitches and then pull the needle through the loop that forms with the thread and then pull that tight and do it one more time. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing to the other fold. And after this, the last thing I'm going to add is a button so it's able to close. And I was thinking of using a zipper for this, but I didn't have a black zipper to match. So I just figured adding one big button to close it up would be easiest. After trying this on my stuffed animal, it was a little bit tight on this Build-A-Bear, but I do have Build-A-Bears that are a little squishier, so it should fit them. So I'm just overlapping the front pieces and finding where I want to place the button. And I'm just putting a pin where I want it. And since the pocket on this side is a little closer to the middle, I figured I'd have that one overlapping the other side. But it really doesn't matter which one's on top. But whatever's going to be on top is where you're going to need to sew the buttonhole. So I'm just comparing my button next to this pin and sketching out a little line with this white crayon. And make sure the line is bigger than the button. And now I'm going to use this as a guide for my button stitch. And after I've sewn my buttonhole stitch, I need to cut the buttonhole, so I'm just folding it in half and making a small cut between those two sides of stitches. And now I'm going to pass my button through to make sure it fits, and then I'm going to overlap the two sides and just look out where I need to sew on the button. So I'm going to put a pin where I want the button to end up, and then I'm just going to sew the button on. I'm going to start by inserting my needle through the back, and this is going to be that lower corner hole. And then you'll want to insert it into the hole diagonal to that one, but I think I did the one next to it, but it doesn't really matter. For the rest of them, I made sure to only have my stitches go diagonally, so in the end the stitches should make an X shape on your button. And once you feel the button has been sewed on securely, you can just lock the stitch in the back. And after that, you can just check to make sure your button works. And now the jacket is finally done, you can try this on your stuffed animal. And like I said before, I made the arms extra long, so it's normal that you can't really see her hands right now. But I'm going to show you how I roll them up. But first, I need to try on the hood, and it can be a little bit awkward with their ears. But with a bear, I just like to tuck them into the hood. And it was kind of hard getting it on with my stuffed animal laying down, but once I did, I kind of pulled out that faux fur, and I think it looks great. And lastly, I'm just going to roll up the sleeves. So first, I'm going to fold them in about half an inch. And then once it's tucked in all the way around, I'm actually going to fold them out now. And that'll give you a nice clean cuff, which is the style I was going for. And now you can just do it to the other one. And like I said before, I didn't bother buttoning this one up because it was a little tight on this stuffed animal. But it was able to button for other ones. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and share this video. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time.